Welcome back to another passage review for the FLE 5, the FL Free, I've seen it called. It's the new AMC practice exam that we're breaking down on this channel. Today's passage is going to be the first passage in the biology and biochemistry section. Uh, so passage number one, and we are going to go ahead and get started because it's a quick one, and it's on one of my favorite sciences in the basic science department, and that is the immune system. So Let's go ahead and jump into this passage. So this passage reads, microRNAs are short, non-coding, single-stranded RNAs, approximately 19 to 25 nucleotides in length that bind to mRNAs. Okay, remember, if we're doing the flowchart method, then this is already giving us a ton of things that we need to pay attention to. So we, we highlight basic sciences, and then we draw out relationships. So some of these basic sciences we're going to pay attention to, um, RNAs, single-stranded, non-coding, nucleotides, um, and then mRNA. Um, so these are some basic sciences. Uh, and one of the relationships is it's telling us exactly what this microRNA is. So you're going to learn about what that is in medical school. But what they tell us here is that it binds to the mRNA. And a colon is my symbol for binding. So it binds to the mRNA and then it leads to protein expression. And then we continue reading. It says, numerous protein encoding genes are regulated by mRNAs. I think I got ahead of myself. That's where protein expression comes from. Um, so these genes are regulated by mRNAs, including those involved in the immune system. So that doesn't really tell us too much besides the fact that, oh, we might be talking about the immune system a little bit. Research has shown that rejection of transplanted organs is associated with alterations in the expression of various genes. So... We say that this could be related to rejection, these proteins. To determine whether a link exists between MR, uh, microRNA, expression patterns, and organ rejection, a team of, ex a team of scientists performed the following set of experiences, or experiments, my goodness. So here, what they're trying to show is that they're curious if these microRNAs lead to protein or gene expression that either increases kidney or organ rejection or decreases it and then they're going to do a couple experiments to prove themselves right or wrong so let's read about experiment one it says micro rna levels were measured at the biopsy specimens of patients with normal transplanted kidneys and patients with kidneys that showed histological features of acute rejection and it says that these sequences are shown in table one i don't see anything that's really high yield or basic science um, table one Nucleotide sequences, remember the way that we interpret tables is we kind of read uh, the, the, the legend or the, the caption, and then we click, quickly glance at them to see what we're talking about. So we've got these sequences, and then they're showing us a bunch of nucleotide sequences associated with different microRNAs. Okay, next. The results for the, MR, for the microRNAs analyzed are shown in figure one. So figure one, we read the caption, says that expression levels of microRNAs in biopsy specimens of normal and acute kidney transplants. Note microRNA levels are normalized to the small nucleolar RNA, RNA, blah, blah, blah. And then it tells us that this indicates our p-value. Um, and if you've read our high yield guide, you know that we do consider statistics to be a high yield portion of the MCAT. So that's definitely one of them. You could say nucleolar would be a basic science. But we are gonna we got to finish this out. We read the legend, and then we read the axes. So explanation, legend, axes. And on our axes, we've got normalized microRNA levels um, juxtaposed to which specific microRNA is getting expressed and if that gets expressed whenever you have a normal transplant or an acute rejection or and, and how much of those. So that kind of makes sense. Of these microRNAs, um, this one, this one, and this one are highly expressed in normal lymphocytes and monocytes. Ooh. So if you've watched uh, the, the high yield video that I, where I explained the immune system and taught through that, taught through the chapter that we have in our high yield textbook about it, then you know that lymphocytes are associated with the adaptive immune system. So that is a high yield science is where these are coming from. Whereas these three are highly expressed in normal human renal cells. So that is not associated with the um, immune system, right? It's just a normal kidney cell. It's saying that these three right here, which if you look up to the graph, they're kind of grouped in the first three, are expressed in normal lymphocytes. So these are, these are 
microRNAs that are associated with the immune system, whereas these three are just in kidneys. So those are just normal cells, and then these are associated with the immune system. Going on to experiment two, it says using acute rejection biopsy specimens, researchers measured the levels of CD3, which is a cluster of differentiation marker for a T cell, and CD20, which is the one that you're going to pay attention to for B cells, mRNA, and determined that there was a positive correlation between these micro er, between these mRNA levels and the levels of these three, which kind of like we said earlier, are going to be the immune system cells. So that makes sense, right? So we see a positive correlation. Anytime they tell us a correlation, we need to be paying attention to that because that's a really strong relationship there. So let's go ahead and tease out what that relationship is. They're saying that we have these T cells and B cells, and the more T cells and B cells we have, we have a positive correlation with these. So they're kind of reiterating that these could be lymphocyte markers or these microRNAs could be expressed in lymphocytes. So that's a really strong relationship. So let's go ahead and draw it out. So higher numbers of B and T cells, which are our lymphocytes, are associated with increased mRNA levels of these first three. So I'm just going to say one through three um, because you would know what you're talking about. But I'm referencing these first three. If you notice, since we're already looking at this graph, you see something different between the first two and the first three, right? So we can go ahead and tease that out if we'd like. Um, it's showing that in these first three, we have higher levels of acute rejection, and they're actually all significant. So the normal rejection or normal transplant is lower, or the level of microRNA in a normal transplant is lower, whereas the level of microRNA whenever you have an acute rejection is higher for these. So we can go ahead and fill our relationship in and say that um, this is also associated with higher levels of acute rejection, which is just a huge uh, landmark relationship for this passage. This is saying that the higher levels of lymphocytes that you have, the higher levels of acute rejection that you are going to experience, which once you get to medical school, you'll learn that that's kind of like what acute rejection is. And it says that this is not associated with the other three, so that's cool. And then in experiment three, it says researchers evaluated the glomerular function of the patients at the time the biopsies were taken and observed a reduction in kidney function for patients with acute renal, or I'm sorry, with acute rejection transplants. So that kind of makes sense, right? That's just saying that like if you get your if your kidney rejects, then it's gonna lead to decreased kidney function. You know, nothing like super groundbreaking about that. So that's that passage. Pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and look at the questions. Question number one says the association observed experimentally between the expression of microRNAs and mRNAs in the acute rejection kidney transplants indicates that microRNAs regulate the expression of genes implica implicated in which types of immune response. <sighs> that is a mouthful. So let's rephrase this question. Acute rejection kidneys are associated with which microRNAs? So we go ahead and look up here, and we see that the acute rejection kidneys are associated with the microRNA markers, or the first three, which we also have found out that are our B and T cells. So that means we're actually rephrasing this question as, which of these do B and T cells fit in? And if you have read our chapter in a high yield guide or watched the video, then you know that B and T cells are associated with the adaptive immune system only. They're the main drivers of it. So that question is A, and I will try to link the video wherever I teach through this subject in the description. So make sure you check that out. Question number two says, based on figure one, which is this guy right here that I've completely marked all over, uh, which patient is least likely to benefit from therapy with immunosuppressors? Okay, so we're just going to go ahead... Um, I guess I can finish reading it. Patient whose transplanted kidneys are associated with microRNA expression patterns characterized by which of the following? Um, so, which of these is least likely to benefit from therapy with immunosuppressors? So, I'm, I'm just going to assume that immunosuppressors are going to decrease whatever result we have. <laughs> I'm going to rephrase it as, which of these four has an outcome that we do not want to decrease? So, A says high levels of micro R155. So first we need to go find micro R155. We found it here and 
what is micro R155 associated with? Well, it looks like it's associated, what's happening? It looks like it's associated with acute rejection. So we probably do not want to um, have high levels of that. And so if it's associated with high levels of acute rejection, if we decrease that with immunosuppressors, well, that's probably going to be a good thing, right? So we'll say maybe not to A. B says low levels of LET7C. So what does LET7C do? Um, it looks like it's associated, LET7C is associated with a normal transplant. So do we want to decrease that with immunosuppressors or will we see a benefit from decreasing that with the immunosuppressors? No, if this is, if this is good, if this is associated with normal transplants, then having low levels of it would probably be a bad thing. So we don't want to counteract that with immunosuppressors. So we'll say maybe not to B. C says low levels, uh, or I'm sorry, C says high levels of MIR 30A, 3P. Um, so what is this one associated with? It's associated with a normal transplant. And so if we have high levels of MIR 30A, 3P, and we decrease that, we decrease this good microRNA, would that provide us a therapy benefit? Probably not. That would probably provide us a therapy detriment. And we're looking for the one that is least likely to provide us a benefit. So we'll say maybe to C, because it seems like it would actually kind of hurt you. And then D says low levels of mere 10 b um, So D and B are essentially the same answer uh, choice because they are both associated with a normal transplant. And so the, the reasoning for B stands with D. And that's actually a way that you could have answered this question if you weren't super sure about it, about how to answer between the last three. You can kind of group them into um, answer choice A is associated with an acute rejection. And answer choices B through D are associated with a normal transplant. And so if you can rule out answer choice A by saying that, no, it would be benefited to, to suppress that response, um, because it's associated with an acute rejection, and you get it narrowed down to B, C, and D, you can really cross out B and D because they're the same answer choice. It's just low levels of something that's associated with a normal transplant. So the correct answer here is C. Number three says, the arrow in the graph indicates the curve representing the melting temperature for which microRNA, assuming 100% base complementary complementarity with its target sequence. So where's the arrow? It's right here, which is the highest temperature, um, percent denaturation at the highest temperature. So I'm going to rephrase this question as, which of these four sequences has the most GCs available in it? The reason I'm rephrasing it as that is because melting temperature is characteristically determined by how many Gs and Cs you have because they have three hydrogen bonds to A and T only having two. So A, T have two hydrogen bonds keeping them together and G, C have three. So always remember G, C three because it kind of rhymes. So what you would end up doing is going up to this table, table one, and physically for every single one of these answer choices, counting out how many G's and C's are associated with it. Now I'm gonna save you the time on that one because I already counted them. But if you were to count them, you would have seven, nine, 10, and 11. So the one with 11 obviously has the most that is going to require the highest temperature to melt because it has the most hydrogen bonds in it. You'd have to overcome those. So that would be answer choice D. And number four says individual nucleotides within the backbone of the regulatory RNA as discussed in the passage are held together by what? So remember, at the very beginning, whenever we talk through um, the RNAs, we saw that they are single-stranded RNAs. So if we're talking about what holds them together, we are talking about what's going to be holding together the sugar and the phosphate. And the name of that bond is what? So that's the question. What's the name of... This bond. So the correct answer to that is B. Answer choice A, disulfide bridges. Remember that's between like two sulfurs, so maybe not A. C is hydrogen bonds. Now you would probably pick this one if you thought we were talking about like some kind of double-stranded molecule and we were talking about the bond between bases and bases. Um, so maybe not to C. And then D is a glycosidic linkage. That's just a linkage between several sugars. So that's not what we're talking about here. So the correct answer is answer choice B. Um, the, the really cool thing about this passage is that 
every single one of the sciences that we walk through in this is in our high yield guide. So make sure to check that out in the description. Check out our math guide and also join our Discord channel if you want to study and or hang out with us. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.